My name is Chris Guy. I'm the co-founder of Pennyweight Craft Brewing. Uh, I've been a contractor for over half my life. Uh, home brew has always been a passion of mine, so I decided to take the leap and get into professional brewing. To be able to create a space and an atmosphere for people to come hang out in, um, share my creations with, uh, share communal space, um, give place for live arts, live music, um, and just something that we can all share together in Livermore that we don't have yet. Uh, Pennyweight comes from a trail name that I've been backpacking since I was a little kid. So when it came to get a name for the brewery, um, it made sense to kind of incorporate uh, something that I also love and am passionate about. Uh, I'd say my main vision for Pennyweight is just to be uh, part of the community here, um, have a space that people can come to, enjoy themselves, drink a delicious beverage, and have a very, very good bite to eat as well. Um, this building kind of picked us. Um, as we were looking at downtown locations, uh, we saw a multiple variety of different sized buildings, different uh, levels of architecture. Um, when we found this building, it was a lot bigger space than we had originally anticipated. Uh, but once we visited with the city and found out that we needed to provide ancillary food as well, meaning a full restaurant, um, this building just kept coming to mind. And once it became really available, then we got down serious with the owners and uh, we really lucked out on our, lo our location here. Um, I moved out to Livermore about 10 years ago um, after living out of country for a little while. And once I moved out here, I just I fell in love with the town. It's an amazing place to be. Uh, there's art all the time. Uh, good weather brings more people. Um, I like to brew all different types of styles, a huge range uh, from light pilsners and lagers to barrel-aged fermentation, um, sours, stouts, porters, things like that. Uh, just really experimental. Um, we won't know what our flagships are until the people tell us what they are. Um, I like to brew everything and I just want to stay, um, just keep a quality control on everything and just brew something delicious every time. We, sometimes we bottle condition our beers um, after packaging, after aging, and we found a local beekeeper. So we've incorporated uh, some of his honeys to mix in with our batches to re-ferment inside the bottles or kegs. Uh, when we brought Chef in, she comes from an amazing high-end culinary background. And uh, so working and con conceptualizing on the food here as our food truck, um, things that you would normally see plated out really nice, sauce spoons and drips and drizzles, things like that. Uh, we're going to bring it up in your face more, build it up rather than out. Um, simple baskets, a lot of shareables, no big giant main course entrees or anything like that. Uh, but just very detail detailed and focused on uh, high quality ingredients and we're going to be fully seasonal as well. So we're going to eat within our seasons um, and keep it rotating constantly. Just be creative and keep things nice pairing with the bar menu, uh, with our beers and our wines that we have in here as well. Um, I'm all about repurposing stuff that would normally be going into a landfill or a dumpster. Uh, for instance, all the big thick slab work you see um, around the tasting room, around all the windows, uh, around the standing bars upstairs, um, that all came from a local park here, Shadow Cliffs. Um, it was all their old picnic benches and tables. And I got a call from my buddy one day and he said, hey, do you want this wood? Um, the wood actually moved in before I did. So we moved in, uh, went through a pile of about 200 slabs, moved the wood in, let it acclimate over time, and then slowly uh, started incorporating them throughout the building. It was originally built as a rock climbing gym. Uh, the two founders of Sunrise Mountain Sports um, still on the building to this day, and they've actually come on to uh, Pennyweight as well as partners. During the build-out, we kind of really wanted to pay homage to the owners of the building. Um, one of the very cool touches that a good friend of mine and I thought of was these little rock climbing men that would act as lights uh, to a bar section that didn't have much light, uh, but just to create a little subtle nuance of some really cool, eclectic, and creative things that we have <laughs> around here. <laughs> the owners of the mountaineering store were getting rid of these shelving um, and they asked me if I'd like to have it and I had a really crazy cool idea um, to build just this massive chandelier and hang about 70 light bulbs off of it. We've connected with a local artist in the area and several others through him. Um, we're going to have a con constantly rotating art gallery upstairs where people can view the art. It'll always be on display 
and people can uh, scan the QR codes on them if they want to purchase them and uh, purchase the art directly from us. And once a, our piece gets removed, we'll replace it with something else in lieu of that piece being sold or missing. Uh, the community has responded um, and outpoured amazing support, amazing love, um, even the building officials at the city of Livermore uh, to the people around Livermore and the community. Um, it, the community support has been overwhelming and just nothing but love. Um, the anticipation is very serious and real, um, and we just can't wait to share the space with with everybody that's been waiting on us to open. So, um, so again, the space was a lot bigger than originally anticipated, uh, but once we kind of got in here, demoed out the building, and figured out the space and what we wanted to do with it, um, a lot of it just kind of came naturally. Uh, materials that were pouring in from people that wanted to give stuff away. Um, again, I hate seeing stuff in landfills, so everything's always got to repurpose in my mind if it's not complete trash. Uh, I went out to China about two years ago to source a manufacturer for our equipment. Um, decided on a manufacturer, went to contract with them, they started production. Uh, went back out there once the tanks were almost completed. Um, and then kissed them on the tank and sent them on a boat. And 30 days later they were arriving at our doorstep. While we didn't even have concrete poured <laughs> and ready to accept the tanks. Um, and then the kitchen aspect was kind of the uh, kind of the unknown variable uh, before we got Chef on. Um, but the whole time, uh, while we were going through this process of, of build out, um, even before, uh, while we were talking to the city about what we wanted to do here, um, when they told us we had to provide food, um, all my friends on brew days would just say, "Hey, why don't you guys just do food trucks like every other brewery? Why don't you just do food trucks? Why don't you just do food trucks?" Um, Downtown Livermore really wants you to patronize all the lo local small business, and so that's not an option for us, downtown being zone one. Um, so one day, a light bulb just kind of went off in my head, and I said, I'm going to build a food truck inside of the building, and that will be our, our food. Um, so that's what we've done, is built a food truck inside, um, and we're going to treat it like a food truck really operates. And you'll order up at the order window, and we'll text you when your food's ready and pick it up at the window. Uh, we have done all the work ourselves. Um, paid attention to a lot of detail that typically uh, normal <laughs> sane people wouldn't pay attention to. Uh, but we just want to do it right on every aspect. Uh, we don't cut corners with anything. Um, a lot of work goes into the small stuff and the finishes and the design of everything. Um, on top of the build out, we're also trying to establish a business and become a brewery. Um, and it's just been an overwhelming amount of work. So. I celebrated my two-year anniversary in the building on January 14th, so uh, start our soft opening process. And Again, we can't wait to share the space with everybody that's been asking, when are you open? <laughs> yeah, so uh, we worked uh, for several months closely with a designer, um, it was a mutual, I had a mutual friend, and uh, we wanted to re represent what Pennyweight is going to brew um, and our eclectic, uh, unique styles. So, uh, we incorporated a hop at the top with some very straight lines uh, to represent kind of the hoppier, cleaner beers um, from lagers to IPAs, pale ales, things like that, and then uh, and then put a barrel on the bottom as well and kind of went wild with some filigree just to show our wild fermentation side um, and the and the experimental side of what we're going to do here at Pennyweight. A good friend of mine, Sean Glassby, uh, local sign painter and artist, uh, approached me one day and asked if I wanted some hand-painted signs, and so I invited him over, uh, we discussed it a little bit, and um, we decided to go with 24 karat uh, gold leaf, it's a dying, a dying art, um, I was more than happy to have him here and incorporate that old school traditional sign painting art here, and uh, we were, we're in love with it, we absolutely love with it, so we're going to do some more with it too. Well, one of our chandeliers in the front entry um, is actually made in Italy. Uh, the glass was all blown on Milano Island, I believe, uh, which is a famous island for Italian hand-blown glass. The mom has been great. Um, you know, I've been building for a long time. I've been in this construction industry uh, for over half my life, and Domum was on top of it immediately. Um, extremely happy with everything I've had out of Domum. Um, and I've seen a lot of architects, I've argued with a lot of architects, I've gone back and forth with a lot of architects, uh, but overall, 
Um, the response time on everything was great. Uh, the creativity was amazing and the collaboration was really what I was looking for.